Okay, Pips is just being adorable right now, so I'm just gonna quickly take a photo of him that you're gonna see, boop, right away. Okay, just wanted to show you that. He's being so cute. He's just right there. It's wonderful. Let's go ahead and jump into the news. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a quenching, amazing pool of fantasy news to splash on into right away. Should pools be quenching? I I don't think so, but we're gonna move on. But we're gonna start off today with a piece of news that just put a big grin on my face and made me so happy. As you know, the Perseverance rover recently landed on Mars to smashing success, and everyone was thrilled to see that. But NASA has announced that they are going to be naming the landing site the Octavia E. Butler landing, showing a ton of respect to one of the greatest minds the genre ever saw. And I just... Oh, I love that so much. I needed to start today with a smile and it put a big grin on my face. It's so wholesome, it's so right, and I just love it. If you have not read Octavia Butler's work, start with Parable of the Sower. It's outstanding and I cannot recommend it enough. This is just real recognizing real as it should. It's, it's, this is great. This is my st favorite start to fantasy news like maybe ever. But moving on from there, of course, I need to talk about the fact that Rob J. Hayes released his list of self-published fantasy books coming out in the month of March. So if you want to check out the self-published side of things, go ahead and check out the link in the description down below and guess whose book happens to be on there. Is it mine? I do want to quickly say thank you guys so much for the absolutely insane success Breach of Peace has been having on the charts, hitting number one in things like epic fantasy, military fantasy, dark fantasy, being in the top selling sci-fi fantasy books, being in the top 100 books on Amazon. My brain can't process it. So yes, it'll be released March 30th. I hope they have the audiobook pre-order links up for you soon as well. If you'd like to pre-order for yourself in paperback, links of course right down there in the description. And thank you again, Rob, for putting me on your list. But we gotta talk about some big boy cover news because we have a new Malazan cover from the legendary Steven Erickson himself and it's got maybe my favorite Malazan title yet. The title's been known for a while but I just want to tell you this title straight cinnamon. The God is not willing. And can we just all acknowledge that in terms of names, in terms of covers, Malazan just represents itself exceptionally well. Like it just feels like the weight of Malazan and like everything in its presentation. I just want to point that out. Leave me alone. Okay, next news. Oh, sorry. And the novel is currently listed as being released July 1st, but I haven't seen that set its confirmed release date. So let's hope it's July 1st and no later. And right as I finished recording this episode of Fantasy News, George R. R. Martin decided to drop a cover for his upcoming book, Death Draws Five, that he co-wrote with John Joss Miller. And now on a curious piece of news that I originally was kind of skeptical on, but the more I think of it, the more I see it as I'm gonna be positive, this is cool, it's creatives being inspired by creatives. Maybe you have seen this delightful drawing that kind of went viral on the internet of a teddy bear defending a little sleeping girl against a monster. Well, apparently a movie studio called Seven Bucks got hands of the image and the rights to turn it into a movie. When the head of the studio, Harem Garcia, saw Alex Penangopoulos' picture, he decided this had the potential for a movie. Movie. And I know what you're thinking, a movie based off a sketch like this, but I, I had the same reaction, but the more I look at it, there's a lot this sketch has. I think there's a big heart appeal to it. And I, I, I don't doubt if you get talented enough writers and you know visionaries involved, they can turn it into a movie that would absolutely be a good time. Especially if you know it's a kid's movie that has this wholesome teddy bear versus the monster thing going on. I'm 100% down. So I actually really, really like this and I hope it's a great movie for seven bucks. And that is uh, inarguably one of the best like fantasy sketches I've seen. I, I adore this little teddy bear fighting this monster and that's a genuinely scary monster. And in the last piece of news before we quickly talk about today's sponsor, the biggest Lord of the Rings nerd of late night is going to be hosting a cast reunion on March 26th. Yes, Stephen Colbert will be sitting down with the likes of Peter Jackson, Orlando Bloom, Sean Astin, Kate Blanchett, Billy Boyd, Ian McKellen, Dominic Monaghan, Viggo Mortensen, Andy Serkis, Liv Tyler, and Elijah Wood. I cannot wait for March 26th and I have a bet to make with you a slim, slight little bet here. Give it six months on the Colbert YouTube channel 
and it will be in their top 20 most viewed videos. I genuinely believe this interview will because it's Lord of the Freaking Rings and a cast reunion like this will pull in views. I have faith, I think it will, and if I'm wrong, I will host an episode of Fantasy News dressed as a hobbit. I might do that if I'm right too, that sounds very fun. But quickly, a word from today's sponsor. Campfire, right? You left me. What are you doing here? You can't stop. No, you can't apologize for leaving me at the altar. I don't put those away. I don't care. I don't care about how well you help organize characters from conception to the actual writing of them. It's not about that. It's not about the amazing deals and prices. No, I don't know either how I'll write without you. You've helped so much. And yes, I am still into the fact that if anyone wants to join, all they have to do is go to the link in the description and they can be a part of Campfire today too. Stop, no, you can't just seduce your way back into this household. Hearts were broken, Pips missed you. He mourned, he doesn't understand, he's just a boy. What are you gonna do to fix what you've done? Did you wanna be sponsored on someone else's channel? Is that what this is? Am I not enough? for you here, I'm gonna give you one last shot, just one, to let me know why I should let you back into this house that used to be a home. What's that? Camp Campfire Blaze has been a smashing success and is helping hundreds of writers every single day realize their dreams. <sighs> now, Rick Royden posted to his blog really recently uh, a bunch of updates about the upcoming Percy Jackson show, and apparently it's going quite well. Disney's really digging the script they have so far. They're moving forward at a good rate, but Rick Royden also cautions against a bunch of clickbaity headlines that are also floating around. The show hasn't even technically been greenlit yet, which is already a term that's kind of difficult to pin down. Different studios have different levels they greenlight at. It, it, it's tricky, but it, he's very confident it will happen with Disney, apparently Disney is very encouraging, but he says it's still going to be a long way off. Obviously, this is a show that's in very early development. So just in general, be cautious about what you're seeing around this Percy Jackson show because it's such a well-known franchise. It's ripe for clickbait to be written about it. People pulling pretty extreme stuff, but right now they have a script, they have people involved. There's no casting yet. There's nothing beyond just, hey, it's going well avoid those other clickbaity things. But to just prove a point, Rick Royden specifically notes in this blog that they're a couple of months out from even having like a budget nailed down. So anything that's saying like confirmed this, just go to Rick Royden's Twitter or blog. He's keeping everyone really up to date. And I appreciate that because it's something that I and people like myself can point to and just be like, hey, uh, stop the clickbait. And as fans have been waiting for this, for ages, I'm very happy to say we got our first look at some footage from the upcoming Why the Last Man adaptation over at Hulu. This has been in development since 2015 when FX ordered a pilot, and now we got our first look. Note, this is not a trailer. It was a slight bit of footage included in a montage of things that are upcoming for Hulu. So you don't even have a full trailer, it's just this little look, but hey, this is something that's been trying to be adapted for ages and now it seems that's so late in the game it's going to be put out so that's good and i'm excited for everyone who's been so patiently i hope <laughs> waiting for this why the last man release and netflix continuing its bombardment of fantasy content that i appreciate has released a trailer for its upcoming dota dragon's blood trailer this gave me heavy warcraft 3 vibes which i find to be appropriate and it looked Pretty good. I liked uh, Zeus Blood and Gods or whatever is called, and this seems to be kind of in a similar vein. At least that's the vibe I got from it as well. I didn't have enough to say for like a full review of that Zeus show, but it was fine. I didn't love it. I thought it was fair, but this has me peaked as well. I mean, Netflix, they definitely are still, as I've said before, have just the throw it at the wall, see what sticks, ride it for a couple seasons, then cancel it mentality, except for a few flagships. But this one, I hope it's, I hope it's one of the ones that sticks. This is an interesting, adaptation and it's got a lot of fans hype so I hope it's one of the ones that pans out nicely and judging by the like to dislike ratio the fans are pretty all right with it so also would you mind leaving a like on the video that'd be pretty cool but speaking of fans being excited one of the franchises I have the most deep tied nostalgias to because of my brother and I's relationship is the alien franchise and we got a trailer for a new upcoming alien video game called aliens fire team I gotta say, this looks a couple generations out of date. This does not look like the most beautiful up-to-date game, but having a Gears of War style third-person approach to alien fighting like this, 
not bad. Uh, that's got me at least going like, that looks like it'd be fun to play. It's not all about graphics, sometimes it's about gameplay. Alien games have been pretty great before, so I hope this lives up to the legacy the franchise has brought forth in the past. Am I blinded by nostalgia? I don't know, maybe. You tell me in the comments down below. I do like the extra chunky alien we got in the trailer. That's a thick -um alien right there. But that is all the fantasy news I wanted to bring you today. I did want to hold off to the very end here, just so people who don't care about this necessarily don't have to sit through it. I just want to say to my audience, thank you so much for making Breach of Peace's launch a success. The early reviews have been thrilling to see, even the criticisms I greatly appreciate, and I'm already pretty far into the second book. So keep an eye out for news on that. If you'd like to pre-order Breach of Peace, links in the description down below. I, uh, thank you. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Benjamin Parker. Hope you're having a good one, Benjamin.